What is up, team? Welcome back to the Red Storm Rapid Reaction Podcast. I'm Pat Kane, and St. John's closes out their 2022-2023 frustrating Big East season with another loss. This one on the road to Marquette, a score of 96 to 94. I hope you guys took the over. Um, the fifth game in this Big East slate where St. John's has given up at least 95 points to put a uh, period, an exclamation point on our defensive woes throughout the year and the struggles we've seen on that end, which have been, um, you know, largely, not solely, but largely to blame with our poor play. If you can't stop people from scoring, it's going to be hard to uh, be in games, especially with the, the uh, group of players we have um, and the lack of consistent offensive weapons. Um, tonight, the offense wasn't the problem. Um, you know, maybe the start of the game was part of the problem. Offense wasn't great, but you score 94 points. And again, you know, similar to last game when we scored 85 points and lost by double digits, you score 94, 94 points and that should be enough. But um, losing guys in transition, not getting back on defense, not fighting through screens, not fighting over screens, not communicating whether we're switching or hedging or staying with our screens. And uh, Marquette got open look up after open look. And Kolick, the head of the snake, does an absolutely fantastic job, as good as anybody in the country, of creating looks for his teammates, for his team, whether he's doing it off um, you know, his own driving kick, whether he's sent people up with screens, dribble handoffs, he likes to cut to the basket himself, he can spot up and hit threes. Um, he's just a fantastic player, and it seems like every every time he's got the ball, good things happen for, for Marquette. Um, and on the other end for us, um, it's hard to look at a game when you score 94 points and you see we shot over 50% and uh, we shot 50% from three um, and we were able to get some good looks. Uh, it just doesn't seem like there's a consistent approach to how we get those looks. Um, but again, 94 points is 94 points. So however you got it, you got it. Um, do I think how we got it is sustainable? No, I don't. But tonight we got those points. Uh, Wusu, for instance, hits a 65-foot shot at the end of the buzzer, hit another bank shot. Uh, three-pointer to end of the game. Um, Sto or Jones had that steal in the corner, turn around quick three. Just a, a, a lot of shots were, you know, are rare to go in. They go in tonight, uh, make the score look a little bit closer than it was and not taking away the uh, the fight and determination the kids show because, you know, when we were down 30 to 11 in the first half, it seemed like the Big East season was, was done early for us, but the kids fought back. They made it a game by the end of that first half. And, you know, they had, Marquette on the ropes. Rarely do you see a team put in a uh, you know a fifth year walk on or whatever the case may be for the end of the game garbage time and have to take them out um, just 25 seconds later before the game ends and that's what happened in this game. Um, I feel bad for Stanley because you know Stanley played a, a really good game overall, was effective attack in the basket, was confident attack in the basket, was on the offensive boards all night, had 15 points, eight rebounds, um, was there for that offensive board at the end of the game, got fouled in the act, went to the line. Down two with three seconds left. Barry's the first one. Timeout's called. Of course, you know, you got to think about that the whole time. There's a little, you know, I don't know if you want to call it controversy. I think it's, you know, happens. It's commonplace in, in college basketball, commonplace in basketball overall. Kolek was talking a little bit of smack at that free throw line, telling Stanley whatever before he took that shot. Stanley misses the shot, um, and that was that. thought it was a little bit of an odd approach. Uh, not having um, Store and Wu Su at the uh, three-point line ready to crash there in that situation. I know you don't want to get beat going back down the court in the case he does make the free throw, but if you're playing the percentages right, you, you got to think there's a, at least a pretty good opportunity he's not making that, in which case three seconds is enough time to get an offensive rebound and get another shot up. The way the, the rebound came off the miss did look like it gave St. John's an opportunity to track it down. Unfortunately, they were not able to um, and Marquette walked away with a two-point lead. And in that first half, when we when we got down by uh, 30 to 11, um, we were just so lackadaisical with the basketball, nonchalant, making errant passes, and it was a combination of everybody early on. I mean, Posh, Wusu, usual culprits, Storr had a few, um, King had a few. Uh, everybody was, was just sloppy with the basketball. Marquette took clear advantage to gain that lead. Uh, they were also killing us on the offensive boards early. They didn't do that much throughout the later parts of the games. You shored that up. But early on, they were getting second and third opportunities. They had some open threes. Um, and we were doing a lot of standing around watching, turning the ball over, taking poor shots. Um, 
you know, Posh hit three jumpers in the first half. He had a pretty good night overall shooting, all things considered for him, but still had a handful of turnovers, six turnovers in the game. Um, that's close to the, the whole amount of turnovers that Marquette had throughout the game combined for their whole team. I mean, that's our starting point guard right there. And a guy, you know, we rely on and, you know, he struggled throughout the year holding on to the ball and taking care of the basketball. And tonight was no different. Um, those shots he made are, are a good sign. Uh, perhaps meaningless for this season, but, you know, you, you want to see a kid like that be confident. And uh, yeah, there have been debates whether he should ever take a three-point shot. I've never been on that side of it. I think if he's left wide open, you got to be um, – willing and able to at least take that three. And obviously it's it's not easy when you're shooting 15%, but um, we saw 30% as a freshman. We saw that take a dip last year. We were hoping to bounce back up this year. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Yes, they did hit three threes. Um, and uh, aside from those careless turnovers, um, you know, it was good to see him finish the season on a somewhat strong case. Can you see how uh, lower my expectations have become? Um, seven and 13 on the year in the big East, uh, not good. Not going to get it done in what Mike Anderson stated, um, himself as his most talented team at St. John's, a team that he, uh, said should be in the tournament. Um, and we have obviously failed to, to reach those expectations or those, those desired goals. And, um, it'll be interesting to see what takes place at St. John's as this season ends. Um, there's a lot of calls for change. There seems to be a lot of talk that the change will come. Um, I'm not as confident that decisions have already been made. Do I have any sources? No, I do not. Just what everyone else is hearing on Twitter, on the boards, and wherever you, else you get St. John's information. Um, there has been more chatter that he, that he will be let go. Um, but we've seen St. John's hold on to coaches in the past for longer than they should, and perhaps we've seen them – um, get rid of them too soon in some cases. So what St. John's will do to me is up in the air. Um, though I think they are within their rights to, to let them go, absolutely. I do believe that, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, in the case that it does happen, then we'll discuss uh, opportunities and options of where to go. But we'll wait for the, the season to be over before we do that on here. Um, Wednesday, we'll play Butler in the Big East Tournament opener. Of course, Wednesday night. Um Butler is probably the, the one team I would feel more most confident beating at MSG for whatever reason. Uh, I think Georgetown would, would get up for us more than others, and I think uh, DePaul's helter-skelter style is, you know, even with us in a sense of chaotic, you know, bogus bullshit, and in any game, in a, in a one winner go home scenario like that, I think DePaul, or DePaul could take us out. I'm pretty confident we'll beat Butler. Not that that means anything. And then we'll be right back to playing this Marquette team this time at the Garden. Uh, we hadn't played Marquette at the Garden in our home game against them, where we also gave up 96 points. But, um, wow, Marquette averages 96 point, points against St. John's this year. I'm sure they're really worried about a uh, third matchup with us, uh, getting their offense uh, tuned up for the um, semifinals of the Big East tournament, uh, I'm sure. But I will be there rooting them on. I already got the uh, – the day off for uh, Wednesday afternoon and for Thursday, uh, win, or, win or lose, I'll be uh, out of work, hopefully cheering on St. John's. Um, but it's just been a disappointing game after disappointing game for the majority of this Big East season, for the majority of the year. You know, not really any uh, wins of any type of magnitude in the in the out-of-conference slate. Um, we've talked about that uh, over and over again. But uh, let's take a look at the box score. Uh, you know, some good individual numbers. When you score 94 points, you're going to have some guys with some some good stats overall. Uh, Wu Su with a career-high 25 points, six rebounds, five assists. He did have four turnovers, four for six from three, nine for 13 overall. So a really good shooting night from him. Of course, two of those threes were miraculous shots. But, hey, you know, you still got to take those, and they would have counted as misses when, you know, in the other direction. So even take those two away, he had a really good night. Um, had a, I thought a solid Big East season and a guy I hope sticks around. You don't have to hear from me again. You know, I'm a big Usu guy. Um, but he has got to, um, not be the lead role of, uh, of a guy, of a team. He can't be the, the main piece, the main focus, the guy doing all, uh, the ball handling and passing. He oftentimes is asked to do too much or, you know, maybe not asked to do, do too much, but takes it upon himself to do too much. And if he was put in a lesser role, I think he could really thrive, um, I don't think he's the player that Sir Dominic Pointer is. 
Um, and when I when I talk about how you can contribute to a team, I, I just want to make that clear. You know, Sir Dom had a fantastic senior season, an unbelievable senior season. And some people might fail to remember his junior year was atrocious. Um, really struggled. The team struggled. And his sophomore year was a little bit better than that. But still, um, if you were to look at Sir Dom's numbers his junior year, they are below Wusu's in almost every category. And he was kind of a guy who didn't have a defined position that junior year. He was playing a lot of guard and out of place. They were giving him like six, seven feet of space, and he didn't know what to do with it. And he wasn't uh, battling inside, getting blocks, getting rebounds, like we saw as a senior when we played him as a, a small ball five. And, you know, like I said, Wusu is not the same player as Sir Dom, but they both impact the game in a lot of positive ways other than scoring. Rebounding, passing, defending, um, being physical, being an athlete. And I think if – Wu Su was put in a position where he wasn't the, the focus ball handling. He wasn't a, a second or third scoring option, just a, a piece of a really good five-man group where he could do the small things, be physical, set screens, make plays for others, shoot open shots, attack when necessary, um, just be a good glue guy and be a physical presence and make shit happen. I think he could really have a, an impact. I think he could be a good piece on a winning team like we saw Sir Dom do. Um, as a senior. And I don't think he's got the ceiling that Sir Dom has because Sir Dom had a little bit more size, a little more athleticism, but I think he has um, some skills that Sir Dom doesn't have. Um, so I, I, that's not uh, an apples to apples comparison, but I just feel the trajectory that Wu Su has taken. I think he has another level to reach if put in the right place um, to, to be a useful player on a team. So I hope he sticks around. I hope he, whoever the coach is next year can, uh, you know, put together a team where he's a part of it. Um, not the main focus, but a big piece. Just thought I'd uh, mention that. It was some thoughts I had. Uh, Posh, 18 points, 6 for 12 from the field, 3 for 6 from the 3. Zero steals from Posh or Wusu. That's a rarity to go along with their 10 turnovers. That's just not a great combination for a St. John's team that relies so much on turning the other team over. Um, Soriano got another double-double, uh, 14 points, 11 rebounds. Stanley, his partner in the front court, Maybe his best overall game of the season of the St. John's career, perhaps. 15 points, 8 rebounds, 6 for 8 from the field. And I think those two misses he had, he also followed up with offensive rebounds. So really efficient night from um, Stanley. Had a great opening five minutes to start the game. Had our first uh, six of our eight points. And then had some good plays throughout, including some late game um, baskets. Of course, that free throw, I'm sure he's, he, he's, he's hurting from that. But hopefully he keeps his head up and can keep this positive play going into the Big East tournament. Store, a tough game tonight. Didn't play great. Only three points. He had a three in the first half off a, and I'll make sure I point this out, a pretty nicely drawn up out-of-bounds play out of a timeout, which got Store a three. We also saw another out-of-bounds play out of a timeout. They got Soriano a post-up and one. So two nice plays out of timeouts that are worth noting. Okay, we, we criticized them if they were bad, so there's two that were pretty nice. Um, store, like I said, didn't play great. He had that one play in the second half early on where he didn't chase down a ball that was going back core. Marquette player beat him to it and scored on an and one where it didn't really look like, you know, store, uh, hustled as much as he could to, uh, to contest at the rim. Um, did I think he should have got pulled? Yes, but I don't think he should have sat for close to the remainder of the ball game. Um, he's a freshman. It was a poor play. I do recall a play earlier in the year where he made the opposite mistake where he chased down a ball in the backcourt and tried to save it when it wasn't necessarily a good call to save it. And then ended up going to an op opposing team player and he made a layup um, almost with too much effort, but an error with too much effort back then. And last night, he seemed hesitant, didn't know what to do. I, I'm not going to say it was just like a, a lazy play, although it looked very much lazy. I think he was just confused. Not that that's any any better, but he didn't pick it up. Marquette got to it, and then he didn't hustle his ass off to go contest, and he got pulled, and he basically sat until about 30 seconds up in the game, I think, if I if I remember correctly. Um, I would have liked to see him go back to him. Teach him the lesson, but get him back in there. You need him to win that game. Um, the bench, NY, didn't do much. Uh, Jones was pretty effective um, attacking the basket, two for five from three, made some plays, 17 points, five rebounds, did miss that two-point shot with a chance to tie it with five seconds left before Stanley rebounded it and got fouled. I don't think that's a bad look. I saw some people saying that we should kick it out to Wusu or, or Store. Of course, looking back with a miss, yeah, you're going you're gonna to think he – hope he did something else. But, you know, a four-foot shot in the middle of paint against the – from a guy who's – 
showed the capability of getting that shot off, I think, you know, you live with that attempt. Um, I don't hate the attempt, at least. I don't, I don't hate it. Um, and then King got a um, pretty good burn, two points, three assists, one rebound, three turnovers. Nothing fantastic, nothing spectacular. A couple um, miscues for sure. I thought he had a really nice drive and finish in the first half. I thought he made two pretty good passes. One was a backdoor cut to, to Wusu for an and one, and one was a um, like a, a handoff in the paint to, to Posh for a layup. I also thought he got robbed of a um, coast-to-coast layup that he fouled, did not get called on. That was a pretty um, nice drive, just layup rimmed out, and then it ended up um, – Boston has a basket on the other end, I believe. Um, he's been hit or miss um, this Big East season. He's been getting more minutes. Of course, Corbella didn't play the night for concussion reasons. Zone's still out for uh, suspension. Um, but, you know, King has not been fantastic. I don't think he's someone that you'd want to throw away. Uh, we'll see what he decides to do. I think he's got potential. But he hasn't really been a game changer or a difference maker in the, in the minutes he's gotten. Um that's about it, guys. Um, you can see, you know, St. John's actually outshot Marquette. We out-rebounded Marquette. We outshot him from the three and from the two. Um, but, you know, some key areas that you don't usually see St. John's struggling, we only had two steals for the game to Marquette's 13. We had 19 turnovers to Marquette's eight. So if you lose those two categories, I know they're very much inter- intertwined. Um, St. John's is usually going to struggle. And of course, the free throw discrepancy, we were great percentage wise, but you took 10 less than your opponent um, in a two point game. That's quite a big bit of difference right there. So anyway, guys, I do appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm sorry I couldn't get this out yesterday. I had my sister's surprise 35th birthday. And um, I tried to not see the score. Of course, I did see the score. So I ended up watching the game, you know, knowing what was going to happen. Um, couldn't miss the birthday, unfortunately. Uh, if it was a Big East tournament final, I think I would have had to come up with an excuse. But seeing where we were at, um, you know, figured I'd be there for that. And uh, I do appreciate you guys continue to tune in. I hope we can do a couple things prior to Big East tournament. I'd like to have maybe a, a wrap-up episode and a Big East tournament preview. Not that it matters too much for St. John's as much as it does for the rest of the Big East, but I like talking hoops this time of the year. So I will put one of those out and I will do recaps for the rest of the games. Uh, I'm trying to do one for every game this season so far. So good. Sorry, this one's a little bit late, but hey, what do you do? Um, for, let's do Thomas Yesalonis. Tomas Yesalonis. This has been Pat Kane, Redstone Rap Reaction Podcast. Peace.